Did you know that we're hosting the Aesthetic Marketing Seminar virtually this year? The AMS is a two-day deep dive in straight to the point, actionable items for spa owners to take their businesses to the next level. We talk about ways to generate multiple streams of revenue in your business. We share formulas for creating irresistible offers for your sales funnels. We talk about systems to get you out of the treatment room so you can truly act as CEOs. We share strategies for getting your new hires booked and so much more. If you're already a student of any of our Auto Aesthetics programs, your ticket is 100% free and yes, you will get the recordings. If you're not a student of ours but still want to attend, your ticket is only $97 and yes, you get to keep the recordings as well. Mark your calendars for September 20th and 21st. This is an event that can help you finish the year strong, not to be missed. Hello, my dearest Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I know you guys are going to absolutely love this episode because we are welcoming back Mike Michalowicz to the show. This is his second time on. Now, if you're not familiar with Mike, he's the author of Profit First, which is a system for business owners to manage their money. I talk about this book all the time. It comes up in our Facebook groups as well. And it was really interesting because just the other day, an esthetician was asking, is it worth it to go through and start Profit First if she only generates 30000 a year? And I can see how, you know, if you feel like you're not at the level of revenue that you're wanting to hit yet, like, do you even need a system to manage your money? And you absolutely do. So many of the, the comments were like, I would do it with my first ten dollars. Like it's it changed the game. And I actually I want to read one of the comments for you because it was just for me, it was so powerful. One gal said, I wish I would have started when I made my first ten dollars, let alone 30K. Definitely do it for yourself. Give yourself the favor and do it right away. I work three days a week, homeschool my two daughters, have a toddler, and was still able to pay off a $20,000 loan, my visa at $10,000, and still travel two times a year to places like Ireland, Vegas, Jamaica, and now I'm planning a, a Disney trip and cruise next fall, all because of profit first. So it just shows that when you when you have a system, when you have a plan in place around financial management, you can pay yourself, right? It's so important. And Mike's system in Profit First breaks it down and makes it super, super easy. He has another book called Clockwork, which is all about systems. So Profit First saves you money. Clockwork saves you time. You guys know I love systems, (laughs) but the reason Mike is on this episode, why we're interviewing him is because he does have a new book coming out all around marketing. It's called Get Different. I pre-ordered my copy about a month ago. It arrives tomorrow. Super excited. Can't wait to dig into that and actually start testing his marketing techniques in our business. And I want you guys to remember, testing is such an important piece because what can work incredibly well for one business may not be the right fit for another. There's so many variables in there. So I'm sure all of the strategies are going to be incredible, but it all comes down to testing. So grab a pen and paper. I'm sure you guys are going to want to take lots of notes for this one. And let's go ahead and play that episode. All right, Mike, welcome back to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I am so beyond excited to have you here for this new book release, Marketing, right? Yes. And, and thank you for having me back, Daniela. And it's just, uh, I'm really excited to share it. So I, it's just a privilege to be with you. Thank you. So, okay. When starting, I've got two questions here and we'll see which way we kind of go. So when I was doing a little research on the book, which I feel like so many business owners, when they start out, they're like, I just need marketing. I need marketing. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you yeah. kind of started with your, your solutions, right? It's like profit first t- fixes the money problems. Yeah, Clockwork yeah. fixes the systems problems. Marketing is like, wait, you've been in this space for so long and just now are really doing yeah. this framework around marketing. Yeah. So, um, number one, my question is like, how do you see marketing? Why did you decide to do marketing? now was that yeah, yeah. strategic yeah. in that and then i want to get into your 
thing about referrals, but I'll let you answer that first. So marketing is the most important element of a business. If no one knows you exist, you don't, you won't exist. So we need marketing. Um, but why didn't I start off with that is I didn't, I didn't have the formula yet. So I, so I spent now a good seven years in the deep research, but uh, a lifetime of experimenting with myself for the last seven years, interviewing, understanding what's working. Uh, the vast majority of marketing fails to work. So I was looking at why does most marketing not work? Um, the trigger point though, and why I said, okay, now I'm ready. It was, I had the information, but I asked myself, is there the need? So maybe about three, four years ago, I started asking audiences when I was speaking at an event. So there could be a few hundred, sometimes even a few thousand in an audience, virtual or, or in person. And I say, um, where do you get the majority of your leads? Is it a uh, referral from clients? And everyone would raise their hand and say, yes, for referral from clients. And then I started asking the percentages. Uh, keep your hand raised if it's more than 10% of your leads come from referrals, 20, 80. I get to like 90% or more of leads coming through referrals and every hand, every hand was still up. I'm like, this is a problem. It's an extraordinary compliment. Your clients like you so much that they refer you business. But it is a problem because the day your client decides to stop marketing for you, your marketing is over. How do you throttle and control it? And so that's where I said, I got to get this book out now of let's get client referrals as a wonderful icing for the cake, but we got to start making the cake. How do we deliberately get a consistent flow of lead opportunity that then brings in sales, which then brings in profitability and all that other stuff falls into a line? That's it's so brilliant and it's such a unique way to look at it because in the spa industry, when you ask people how they want to promote their business, it's always word of mouth, but yeah. you're right. You're completely giving up control. And, and my stance on it was like, okay, word of mouth is not the same today as it was even 10 years ago. You still have to do the social media presence, the website. You can't sure. have a website that looks like it's from 1990, right? Because that is the first impression. Um, but you're going deeper and saying you oh, can't yeah. even rely on that because you're giving up control of your business. If those people move, if those people, you know, start families, their financial situation changes, right? Like whatever changes in their life and they stop referring you're putting all your eggs in their basket instead you're of taking whim. control. Yeah. You're totally at the whim of the customer. And uh, that happens, right? People move away. Uh, people are moving a lot right now away from cities, moving to some, you know, the, the whole demographic of the, the country, the U S is changing. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, is when you do get word of mouth, people validate now. So it used to be, Oh, I heard of your store or your spa or your business from a friend. I know nothing about it. I'm just walking in to check it out. It doesn't happen anymore. Now people are like, oh, I heard of your spa through a friend. Therefore, I went to the website to validate that you offer what I want, that you look the way I want you to look before making the effort of even picking up the phone to call you or visit. So there are these platforms, social media and so forth. It is mandatory you're there because that is your presence. And word of mouth only gets people to visiting your electronic presence. So what we do with our marketing um, is, is twofold. One is we're deliberately generating leads out of our own intent, meaning we don't have to wait for the customer's whim. But secondly, we're validating our existence and presence immediately. So when someone gets um, a postcard in the mail from your, your firm, it actually, your spa, it elevates the credibility that you exist. It's not just someone saying, oh, I love this place. It's down the corner of the street. Now they have uh, pictorial information and so forth. But the, the concept from Get Different is when we do outbound marketing, we do it in a way that is different than our competition, different than what everyone else is doing, because that will distinguish you and that will get noticed. So do you tell me a little bit about the framework? Are you guys yeah. focusing on brand awareness and kind of developing who you are as a brand, or is it more tactical? Like, give me give me some ideas because I know the book comes out tomorrow. Yep. And so, you know, we want to give some people some ideas of of what they're looking at, what they're going to experience. Yeah. It, yeah. So I boiled down marketing to I call it the DAD framework. There's these three elements. Uh, it's an acronym. The first D stands for differentiate. So look, first, I'll break that down. What we need to do in our marketing is do what is not the best practice of our industry for marketing. 
I'm a big believer in best practices. If someone can run their spa more efficiently by doing X, Y, Z, I'm going to do the same. But when it comes to marketing, there's this thing called habituation that actually causes best practices to fail. Hmm. What the habituation is, is if you receive something and you've received in the past and was of not a value that time, you won't consider it as a value now and you'll disregard it before you consider it even consciously. So a classic example, I'm sure, Danielle, you got this at one time, a hey friend email. You know, someone emails, you like, oh, hey, friend. I remember the first one I got. I was like, who's this friend of mine calling me friend? Like, this is such a friendly friend. I can't remember this friend. I started reading into it. I'm like, oh, this is simply marketing and it's not relevant to me. I don't want it. The next hey, friend that came in, you know, the next day, I was like, suspicious. I'm like, should I read this? The third one, I've never read a hey, friend email again. That's habituation. Our minds are very effective at ignoring what we've seen in the past. If it's not a value, we disregard it and won't consider it. Therefore, the best practice is, hey, do that postcard mailer because everyone does that. It actually is less likely to work because the consumer is always getting postcards from spas. They're like, oh, I'll ignore it. So what can you do that's different? Um, different always gets noticed. So if, if you and I were having this conversation and we were sitting outside and all of a sudden something squiggles on the ground, we will absolutely pay attention to it. We'll jump back. That could be a snake. It could be someone turned the hose on. We don't know what it is, and therefore we have to evaluate it. So the goal of the first phase of the DAD framework is to do something that's unexpected. So I'm just making this up right now, but uh, why not mail um, a, a massage roller? That may be kind of expensive. Why not mail an essential oil that you use just so that when someone opens it, they get the scent of what they're going to experience at your spot? Something different like that forces them to pay attention. Because our mind is wired when something unexpected presents itself, we must evaluate it to be a threat, therefore avoid it, an opportunity, consume it, or ultimately is of no value, ignore in the future. Mm -hmm. So stage two, the A, attract, is about showing an opportunity. So we differentiate, we get attention, then we must show that we're attractive. And to show how you're attractive is simply speak to the customer's interest. Maybe they, they have a need saying, hey, do you have aches and cramps uh, all the time? We help that. Um, do you have muscle pulls? We fix that. Um, but also it could just be entertaining or um, curiosity invoking saying, you know, opened new spa, the first to have this new innovative technology or treatment that can invoke curiosity. So it's something that's attractive and compels the person. The final component, and so many marketers miss this, particularly in big companies, shockingly, is direct. So differentiate, attract, and then direct. Direct is give a specific, explicit direction for that prospect to take. And it needs to be reasonable. So what, you know, what do you want to do next? Is it come down to our spa immediately and, and drop two or three hundred dollars? That may be actually too big of an ask right now. It may be um, give us your email address and we'll send you a, a coupon for our five most popular spa treatments. That now, that exchange, and there's a currency there, they're giving you something, their email, and you're giving them something in return is matriculating, moving them closer to the ultimate transaction. Mm -hmm. The key is this, it needs to be reasonable. They must feel comfortable doing whatever that is. But also our job is to move them as efficiently, quickly as possible to the ultimate transaction we want, which may be a purchase of a treatment. So you can use this little acronym uh, in a mnemonic sense. It's kind of a little weird and creepy, but you can say, does dad approve? <laughs> it's just kind of weird, but anything you look at your own marketing, your competition's marketing, anyone's marketing, simply say, does dad approve? Meaning does it differentiate? Does it attract? Does it direct? If it's missing any one of those elements, the marketing is doomed to fail. If it has all three of those elements, you've set yourself up for the best potential for success. The best pot potential for success, assuming that you have the foundational blocks, you know who your customer is, you know who you are. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's super a great important point. to stay to say, because so often there's these like business one oh one. you know, do who's your ideal client avatar and who are you speaking to and making sure that you know that client. I think that that's a, a foundational piece. Absolutely key. It, play, it plays into the attractor factor. So that middle letter a does it attract mm -hmm. if uh, say you're targeting athletes or something, right? And if your message is get a wonderful, relaxing massage and you're targeting athletes, there's no attraction and that's going to be a failure. So you do have to know who you're targeting so that you can speak to them. But if it says, you know, um, experience our, our, our spa for stretching and uh, release of, of muscle tension. So you have an optimized performance in your athletic events. 
Well, that's a, that consumer, she'll want to buy that. So to your point, you have to know who your prospect is because that's the only way you can identify what will attract them. So how do I tie this into profit first and clockwork? How do I know the budget that I'm allocating towards mm. marketing? And how do I create a system around this so that it can be repeatable? Yeah, so uh, profit first is about uh, ensuring properly for the firm and then allocating money to different intended expenses marketing being an expense. Most teachings I've studied have marketing plans. And I think that's actually a mistake, even in the labeling. A marketing plan is here's what we're going to commit to and here's what we're going to roll out. Because many marketing plans, when they're failing to get traction, the response is you're simply not doing enough of it yet. And that becomes a fatal mistake. Like you ran a Facebook ad, it didn't get any returns. The response is, well, you didn't run enough Facebook ads. And it becomes this downward spiral of, of a bigger and bigger spend. Instead, in Get Different, I teach what's called marketing experiments. Experiment, by definition, is something that we don't know if it'll succeed or not. And the intention is to do something to find if there's value in it or not. That's what an experiment is. And we do it at a minimal cost. What is the smallest experiment we can run to get valid feedback? So instead of doing that mailing campaign with your essential oil to thousands of people, can we send out to a sample of 100 people and put a key in there, not a physical key, but a way to track that people are responding? So I send out that essential oil campaign, and I may say, um, you know, email us at uh, spa1 at gmail.com. And I may do another campaign, say, email us at spa2 at gmail.com. And then I'll see anyone that responds to spot one is responding to this one marketing campaign. And anyone who responds to spot two is responding to that other marketing campaign. And this way I can measure what's working. Once you start getting traction when it's working, then we look to amplify it. One that fails, we either abandon or we tweak and improve and try it out again. And, and just to give you an example of this, um, I'm experimenting all the time. In fact, right over my shoulder there, that display of my books, that came out of experiments. I noticed that my contemporaries, my competition, we're all doing standard bookshelves displaying their books. I get it, but we become habituated to it. It's like, oh, there's another postcard. There's another shelf of books. So I was like, what can I do that's different? And I started testing things out and I came across this tree and I got a, a smaller version of it first to test out. And I noticed in my virtual presentations that people were saying, look at that tree over the guy's shoulder. What books are those? I was like, oh, that's getting attention. And then the experiment blew up into what it is today. And uh, it's definitely yielding engagement because I can measure it through. Got a couple more responses. holes up there for more books too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see it and get different was right there now. It's starting to starting to fill up. So what we need to do is start running these experiments, um, but do it as cost effectively as possible. I'll give you just one more example. Yeah. Uh, I noticed when I'm traveling, when I'm at airports and I'm traveling more frequently again for speaking as, as the COVID situation's in control, we'll say. But... Uh, what I did notice is when I am at an airport and I log onto my phone to get on the internet, I see all the hotspots around me. One guy even had it said the CIA. It was like a joke, you know, like, oh, that's kind of cute. Then it's like, oh, what I'm going to do is buy a wireless access point. You can get this router thing that's the size of your, your fist. It's tiny and uh, connected to a battery and have one that says, buy, get different. My book, buy, get different on Amazon. So now when I'm pulling into the airport, I just turn this thing on. Everyone that's logging in on their phones is seeing buy, get different along with the internet for the, the place. I go to events I speak at, I leave it at the AV booth for the entire day. I've had people come up to me at an event saying, you wouldn't believe this. This event is advertising your book. And I'm like, you, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> because they see the Wi-Fi. Literally, it was a $25 investment for that, that wireless access point and the battery got for free at some event uh, to charge phones, which also gives it power to this Wi-Fi. So you can do these experiments very inexpensively, 25 bucks, measure the results, and you're doing something that no one else is doing that will get noticed. Yeah. And it's really interesting. I think that testing, especially now, you know, you brought up COVID, we've been in this pandemic for however long there's the Delta variant, all, you know, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, all the things. And in spas, I can tell, you know, we're at this place where now we're open again, people are yeah. having record years, but there is this fear that if we have mask mandates again or whatever, like in a spa doing facials, you can't do a facial with a mask on. Right. Yeah. And so in the past, in 2020, we really had to pivot. We had to come up with like, how are we going to serve our customers and clients in a new way? How are we going to sell retail? How are we going to do virtual consultations, et cetera, that I think that we advanced a lot in, in marketing 
in the spa industry. But the trick is how do we continue to test and keep that behavior and, and improve that behavior, you know, over and over and over sure. now that things are back to normal, because as business owners so much, we're like, oh, this was going on during the pandemic, but now it's back to life as you, we kind of go back to our habits. Yep. So for you being a constant tester, like, where do you get that motivation from? Where do you get that drive from to always be in that testing space? There's a saying that uh, grooves become ruts. And as we go back to this normal, we're getting back into that groove, but there's a fear trigger for me saying, okay, that means I'm going to start replicating the exact same pattern. Once I get into a pattern uh, that's working and comfortable, it's going to be harder to break that pattern. And when things change, I'll be caught offside, uh, you know, caught, caught unprepared and it can crush me. So when something's working in marketing, I milk it for all it's worth. This is not coming down until it's not working. Um, I milk it for all it's worth, but behind the scenes, I'm like, what is the next new thing? The interesting thing too, is I actively put it out there as a way for me to constantly invent. So that Wi-Fi thing I did, I've never seen anyone do that, uh, promoting right. anything, but I've been actively talking about it. And people are like, that's your secret. Why don't you keep doing it? Well, once you're marketing, it's no secret. The, the consumer themselves are seeing it. So I actively try to encourage other people to do the same. And I don't know if people will do it or not. Honestly, I think most people won't do it because there's a fear to do different. Uh, there's an innate fear you know, of standing out. You'll get noticed. It's, it's ironic that we want to be noticed without being noticeable, but that's the truth. But by putting it out there, I'm constantly thinking of new things. I also have an underlying principle and that I think every spa has, every entrepreneur I know has. And it's based upon this. I believe that the services I provide to my customers, the books that I write are truly the best of me. And I think they're better than many of the alternatives that are marketed out there. I also realize I'm a small player in a big market. And there's these bigger industries or companies that are putting out books that I feel are inferior. So I have a responsibility. If I have something that's superior to the competition, but I'm not being heard, the ultimate act of kindness is to make my prospects aware. And the ultimate act of kindness that a spa can do is to make their customers aware. If what you do is better, serve the customer, it improves their health, if it's better than the competition, if it's more convenient, if you care more for them, damn it, you have a responsibility to market and always find a new one. And, and for me, that's a fuel every single day. I'm not like sitting here like selling trying to write from service. Yeah, selling from service. Selling from service. Yeah. So, yeah. so I won't get into a rut because I'm like, you know, I got to continue to be of service and I won't fail my customers by not marketing effectively. And that's why I continue to look for new experiments. So the book is called Get Different. It comes out tomorrow, September 21st. Yes. So where can everybody, where do you want to send everybody? Where do you want them to get the book? You know, the, the best starting pot spot is to go to gogetdifferent.com. So gogetdifferent.com is the resource page for the book. Um, and why you can get the book through that site, but there's something I think that's even more compelling. On there, it says the free resources. I've written up a hundred experiments you can do that cost nothing or practically nothing um, that will instantly differentiate you from the competition. So it's a hundred marketing ideas just to get you started. And I think it's a great way to build the muscle. It may bring some amazing results for you too. That's my hope and intent. And that's available for you free at gogetdifferent.com. Perfect. We'll get that all linked up below this episode. Mike, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to have you on the show again. I wish you so much success with this new book. Thank you so much, Danielle. It's a pleasure to be back with you.